I was studying, um, and I and I was and I was taking this story that's one of my favorite stories, but um, and it's about it's in Exodus, where, <clears throat> excuse me, where um, Moses is leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, and um, and there is um, an element of that that looks like what is happening in our country in a way today. I'll show it to you as we move on. And I'll try not to take any very long doing this. Um, as Moses had led the children of Israel out of, uh, out of Egypt, they were coming out of Egypt, they had, they had gone through and they had, the Lord told them to go to the Egyptians and to take the money, the gold, the silver, that the Egyptians gave them because they would be needing it in the wilderness to build, um, to build a sanctuary there. So they went through, they, they, they took the money from them, they took the gold, they took the silver, all of this stuff, and then, then uh, and I got ahead of myself just a little bit because they had had the, um, they had put the blood over the doorposts and the angel of death had gone through and everybody that hadn't had the blood over the doorpost, Moses told them to put the blood of the door over the doorpost, and this was the blood of a little lamb. But it, for those that had it over their doorpost, the first person in their family was saved. He did not die. But if they did not have that blood over the doorpost, the first person in that family died. And so the death angel had gone through that night, and many of the Egyptians, all of the firstborn, were killed that night. The Hebrew children, there was no one killed in, in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were at. They said that the dogs didn't evenly bark. It was peaceful. It was peaceful in the land of Goshen. So when it came time for them God told him, he said, have your boots on, be ready to travel because I'm going to call you out of here. So he called them out the next day. They started. And, uh, of course, during this time, the Egyptians had to bury their dead. And I'm going through this real fast. I suggest you go back through it and read it slowly because there's a lot in it. Um, the Egyptians had to bury their dead. As they buried their dead, they were, grew more and more angry, of course. And uh, they began to think, why have we let them go? Well, let's take a look at where Moses, God had told Moses. The Lord spoke to Moses, and this is the 14th chapter of Exodus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, so they turn, they turn and camp before Hephron, between Migdal and the sea, before Baal Zephron, opposite it, you shall camp by the sea. Now, and Baal Zephron is the name of a god. You all know, you kids know from the time you were little and studying in Sunday school that those ten plagues were each one gods that God destroyed. But now here's another one because Baal, Baal, Zephron was a god. And God was telling Moses to take them right to the base of the mountain where the Egyptians went to to worship Baal. Now that sounds surprising, doesn't it? Take you right to the mountain where the Egyptians worship this God. And I want you to camp there, camp by the sea. For now he's got a plan. He's quite, uh, he's very, very much on knowing exactly what he's doing and how he's going to do it. He said, uh, if you will camp by the sea, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they're confused. They're confused in this land. The wilderness has shut them in. So I will harden because they think 
they think, okay, all right. We thought God had, we thought that Moses had destroyed all of the gods in Egypt, but here's one left, and this is a mighty one. And this is the mountain where we all go to to worship Baal. And God is drawing them right towards that mountain where we worship Baal. Aha, uh -huh. God, Baal is going to draw the people in and they're going to be there for us to take out. And then it will show who the mighty Pharaoh is. Who the mighty Pharaoh is because they're going to bring them right to the base of the mountain of our God, Baal. And that's where they're even going to be camped. They're just sitting there. So this is, what, this is what God told Moses to do. He told him, he said, I want you to go and I want you to camp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, he knew what Pharaoh was going to say. He, Pharaoh would say, well, they're confused in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. So, so whenever they do that, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart so he will pursue them. God wanted to make sure to get Pharaoh and his whole army. He wanted him. The trap was not for Moses and the, Israeli, and the Israelites. It was for Pharaoh and his army. And instead of it bringing Moses and the Israelites to the base of the mountain of Baal, it was actually pulling Pharaoh and his army in because they were going in. They were going to destroy the Israelites. After all, their God had brought them in, had them camp right there, right in the middle of this place where they worship Baal. So they knew, well, he's given to us. So, so as they get up and they decide that, what have we done? What have we done? We've made a mistake. They have taken our treasures. They've killed our people. But the God of Baal is giving him back to us. And we're going to go get them. Moses said to his people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again. Some of the things that are going on in our country right now, we think, oh my gosh, the whole nation is going to go down. The nation's going to go down. There's nothing can save our nation. But God's got a plan. God's got a plan. And sometimes we get bad reports from the doctor. And we say, oh my gosh, how are we going to get through this? You know, God, we're going to have to have help, God. God's got a plan. Now let's get back to this Egypt thing, and we're going to be through here in just a minute. The Lord will fight for you, Moses tells them, while you hold your peace. You're, you're not going to have to fight. Hold your peace. God's got a plan. He's going to take care of this. The Lord said to Moses, and he, he kind of gets on to Moses right here. He says, Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me, Moses? Can you imagine Moses saying, God, I got to have help. <laughs> you know, and Moses said, the Lord said to Moses, and boy, look this one up. This one is 14, chapter 14, verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Speak to the children of Israel. So they go forward and ask for you, lift up your rod. Now what's he telling Moses? Moses can't just sit there and cry and weep either. Moses has got to put that rod up over the Red Sea. He's got something to do too. Be quiet and tell your people what they're supposed to do. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and then the children of Israel will go across on dry land. Through the midst of the sea, people, we cannot afford to get scared when we're in the time of a battle with Satan. 
Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't let him shake you loose from Jesus because that's exactly what he's attempting to do. With the words of doubt and unbelief, he's trying to shake you loose just like he did with Adam and Eve. He shook them loose and they turned from the Lord. Don't do that. And right here, he's, Satan's trying the same thing again. And I'm going to skip on down. Then the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, moved and went be behind them. And the pillar of the cloud moved before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. They had two angels. It just took two. Just took two. Two angels, one in front of them, one behind them. And stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And there was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night. The Egyptians had darkness. The, Egypt, the Israelites had light. Therefore the one did not come near the other the entire night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land so that the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground and the waters were a wall between them on their right hand and on their left. Then the Egyptians pursued them. And I'm not going to take up in more of your time. You know exactly what happened to the Egyptians. When they went into the water, they thought, okay, they went into the water. Boy, we can go too. There was not an ounce of doubt, I don't think, in Pharaoh's mind. He was so ready. He knew that his God had delivered them to him. That they poured off into that sea because they saw that the Israelites had gone across on dry land. They followed him. But when they got in, the wall of water came back down. And the Lord took the wheels off from his chariots. Read it. It's really an interesting story. But read it slowly. Meditate on it. See how God worked it. That's the same God. That's the same Father we serve. Satan can't do a thing to us, people, because God loves us. God loves us. The only way he can hurt God is by hurting us. So hang on. Hang on. I know many people are having problems. But hang on. God has got you in the center of his hand. He's got you in the center of his hand. Hang on. Because he'll take you through. Just like he had a plan for the Israelites. He's taking you through. And people, not only is he going to take the United States through, believe it with every ounce within you because he's going to, but he's going to take the whole wide world. He's not giving up an inch of it. And we're just about ready to see some of that get started. So hang on. We're in for a ride. I'm going to ask you all to just stand. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Father God. This service is for you. This service is to give you honor, to give you glory. Father God, I, I hope, I pray that your word has gone forth, that it has helped somebody, that it has lodged in somebody's heart, and that it has helped in some way. Father God, I, I just give you praise. I give you this service. I give you this service. I give you this church, Father God, and my sisters and brothers. Father God, I just, I just thank you. I ask for the Holy Spirit to just be turned loose in this place. Oh, Lord, that we might worship the Holy Spirit, that we might worship you, Father, that we might worship you, Jesus, as we have never worshipped you before. Father God, raise the level of, of, the, of the power of our worshiping you, Father God, that from our hearts that it will just pour forth. It will just pour forth that you get worshipped as you are so richly deserved. And I ask this, Father God, I ask, Father God, for those that have got prayers, Father God. I know they've had prayers in the middle of the night, Father God. They are, I know, I know that there's people here that are praying in the middle of the night. And they have, they have very, very heavy needs on their heart, Father God. 
And I know that you know all about them, Father God. I pray that they will just hold them up to you to this morning, Father God. For you to touch, for you to anoint, for you to touch their hearts that they might feel your holy presence. Oh, precious holy Jesus Christ, there is no way that we can ever begin to thank you enough for everything that you have done for us. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Take this service. Take us as a group of people, Father God. And I pray that we will be able to be used by you mightily, Father, in doing the things that you have that are coming up, Father God. In the name of our most precious and holy Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. is past. 
Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed upon him the name that is above every name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven, those on this earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the God the Father. Just the mention of his name. We stand this morning, God. We declare your greatness, Father God. You are worthy to be praised. We stand on your word, God. Hallelujah. You stood before. Eternity in your hand. You spoke a life into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my failure, and you carried the cross for my shame.
this again. Just life throws things at you to distract you and confuse you and stress you out. But listen to me now. The Word of God says He'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. So here's what, here's what we need to do. You need to rest in His peace in these next few moments and know that regardless of what happens, regardless of circumstances that are in your control or out of your control, God's still on the throne. Right? And listen, regardless of what happens tomorrow, what God regards what happens the rest of the day, that's good news. It's good news. Oh, that's what you heard? Well, guess what? God still reigns. And the Word of God says He's working for the good. He's working for your good. You know why? Because you love Him. That's it. So don't focus about tomorrow or worry about tomorrow or stress or look back or even look forward. Just right now. Right now. Our God reigns. And He's working for you. Like we talked about last week, He's preparing a way for you to do good. storm that came up and the wind and the waves is what we're talking about the wind and the waves but it was just a lot of chaos going on and I'm sure they didn't just say hey Jesus I'm sure they're like hey Jesus they knew what they needed Jesus Jesus he rose and he spoke to the wind and the waves and they instantly quieted down I know some of you this morning just need your spirit to quiet down. Just the name, the mention of his name. Foundations will begin to fall. Things that you've built for years. It's not too late. It's you have you have time. You're breathing this morning. You have time. We know with the mention of his name that demons will begin to flee from the situation in Jesus' name. Just the mention of His name. We thank You, God. Thank You for provision this morning, Father. of 
the healer with the power of your spirit you're all we need at the mention of your name every chain will break I know everything Church, Jesus said these words. He said, I am the great I am. And listen, um, some of us are, have difficulty asking for something because of pride. That's what it is. And uh, I'm one of those. I do things a lot by myself that I could ask for some help and it'd be much easier. Much easier. And there's people willing to help. Or may they... They may even want to help. I, th I think to my lovely wife who's back here who I called my current wife last week. I didn't mean to say that. That, that was not, that didn't, came out, 
that sounded different in my mind before I said it, but um, th this is what she is to my girls on a daily basis. She's a nurse, right? She's a doctor. She's a more than full-time psychiatrist, right? She does counseling. She's a chef. She runs a laundromat. She has a cleaning service. <laughs> She's a disciplinarian. She's a taxi driver. She's an encourager. She's there when they need them. She's told me before about like, like their ball games. Like a ball game. She said, if, if one of them played in college, she said, I'll retire because I'm not missing their game. Now, just like she is to our girls, God is to you. What do you need? What are you in need of? He can be all those things at one for every person in the whole world at the same time. He's the great I am. What do you need? You need a provider. You need healing. You need a counselor. You need a spiritual psychiatrist. He's all of those things wrapped up into one. But you got to ask. You got to ask. So, Father God, we come to you right now. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you are the great I am. Lord, that whatever we're in need of. That any question, God, then think about this, church. Any question we could ask him. He has the answer before we even ask it. How many of you parents, know, when your kids approach you, you, they know, you know what they're going to say. You know what they're going to, you, you know what's coming. I, I've, I've, Audrey and I have been married uh, 18 years, I think. Was it 18? 18 years. Listen, I know how she's going to respond to something. I know that. And that's from time spent with her. And it irritates her when I respond for her. But it even irritates her more because I said what she was going to say, right? But listen, when you come to God, he's got the answer before you even ask it. The Lord says he's a great physician. It says he's a healer. He's a provider. And we just sing about Emmanuel. It's not even Christmas. Why? Because he's God with us. He's not just with you at Christmas, church. He's with you in August, too. He's with, you, he's with you on a Monday morning, not just a Sunday morning. Lord, we thank you that you're all in all, Father God. God, help us to, to, to just cast that pride down in Jesus' name and ask for help. To ask you, God, I need help in this situation. I need wisdom in this situation, Lord. And then be quiet long enough to hear you respond. Father God, we thank you that you are the great I am. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for moms that have a thousand different titles all in one hour. Ushers, as you come, Father God, we just lift up, uh, God, the rest of this service to you, Lord. It's not about us or me or somebody else. It's not about a group of people, Lord, but it's about you. God, it's, it's not, Lord, I pray that we never come to church because of tradition. Lord, but we come to church to get a fresh encounter. We come to church to get a, a, an encouraging word to strengthen us to the next week, Father God. To strengthen us as we go through the week. To be salt and light, Lord. I pray that these scents will go to lift up your kingdom. Add names to your book of life, Father God. Because when it's all said and done, that's what's, that, that, that is what matters, God. And we, we believe, Lord, that you can take these scents, Lord. These dollars and cents, Lord. Only you can do this and save souls. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Darkness is fading. The walls of fear, brick by brick, will come down. Your light will shine, lifting me out of the shadows. Here and now, I will wear my breakthrough as well. Yeah.
Side. Amen.